What the fuck is happening, everybody? It's your boy Foxhound357, and it's been a while since I've done one of these. I am in the mood for something challenging, and... Seeing as I've been in involved in the, in the uh, Metroid community as of late, and I've taken an interest in this sort of category, I'm going to be doing a 15% uh, run on hard mode for Metroid Zero Mission. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. So one of the reasons I was interested in this category is because, uh, as far as I know, Zero Mission is the only uh, Metroid game where beating or com clearing the game with a low item collection rate was intentionally designed. And we know this for two reasons. One, in the areas where you would normally need uh, uh, certain upgrades to proceed, because the obvious path, there would always be an, a not-so-obvious alternative route you could take, where you could either, like, blow a hole in the ceiling with missiles or bombs or something, and then circumvent the upgrade that you would normally need. And you would just, and you would just use these uh, un alternative, unorthodox routes to get around instead. Getting to uh, Ridley would, is going to be the big one, and I'll highlight that later. And the second thing is that, as far as I know, these this is the only game that has a special ending screen for completing it with 15% or less. There's one for normal mode, and there's one for hard mode. I'm just doing hard mode because uh, I'm a masochist, I don't know why. But anything that the hard mode routing court uh, encompasses can be used for normal mode as well. Your mileage will vary. So, the uh, absolute minimum uh, amount of items you need to complete the game in uh, either mode varies s just slightly. For normal mode, you need 9%. Morph Ball, Bombs, Missiles, those three are obvious. Be countless areas you couldn't get to without. Um, various Suit, Ice Beam, Power Grip, and the three unknown artifacts. Ice Beam, you need to kill Metroids and Turian. There's no way with to, there's no way to do it without that item, so... Uh, Power Grip, you wouldn't actually need to get around, except for the fact that there's an enemy in uh, Norfair that blocks as access to the eastern part of it, and this enemy is only hard-coded to disappear once you pick up the Power Grip, so the game kind of forces your hand in that regard. Various Suit, you don't actually need to complete the game, but the game gives it to you anyway when you get your fully powered suit. So, unless you're speedrunning this, there's no point to skip it, skipping it. I just grab it at my earliest convenience, which is right after I get bombs, in fact. It's a little bit tricky to get with just bomb jumping, but it is doable. Ah, uh, I think he's gonna go away. Because I missed that first shot. Okay, that'll work. Give me another missile, please. Thank you. Uh, so yeah. Uh, morph ball, bombs, and missiles. Those are obvious. And missiles are... Also because you're not picking up the charge beam, or you normally wouldn't. I, I don't know of anybody that incorporates it into their remaining 6%. Missiles are really going to be your only way of damaging bosses. There's one exception, but because you're not going to have the long beam either, or most likely you won't have it, you're not gonna, your beam's not going to have enough range to deal with that boss's weak point, the uh, sandworm. Uh, and then, yeah, power grip is obvious as well. And then, like I said, various suit, you don't actually have to pick it up, you don't need it, but the game gives it to you anyway, so unless you're speedrunning, there's no point in skipping it. You'll want to get it at your earliest convenience just for that defense boost, especially for Turian. And I always get it right after I get bombs, which I'll show, which I will uh, demonstrate shortly. And then the three unknown artifacts, for obvious reasons. Now, on hard mode, you need to take an extra item, a tenth percent. And the reason for this is that there is a room in Chazodia that requires a minimum of three missiles to get through because of missile blocks. Um, but, the, you know what, I actually want this missile tank. But, the good news, in, in a strange uh, coincidence, is that there is actually a uh, alternative route you can take through this room, and because of this, while it doesn't allow you to skip the tenth item, it gives you a choice of what your tenth item can actually be. And you have three options in this regard. You can take a second missile tank, you can take a super missile tank, or you can take the screw attack. There are some screw attack blocks in that same room that you can use to bypass the missile blocks. Now, the obvious choice is to take the uh, super missile tank. It's 
It's the equivalent of five damage worth of missiles. It uh, it's just a lot of burst damage right off the bat, and it gives you three shots, which is just enough to get through that room. But taking the second missile tank has its merits as well. Uh, because missile refills are so common, less refills get wasted because of, over of overflow. So being able to hold four as opposed to two means you can pick up two refills and one of them isn't going to get wasted. So you'll have less burst firepower than with a super missile, but you'll have more sustained firepower and it'll be and the results will be more consistent. Assuming the RNG was in, was in your favor and you were speedrunning this, the super missile tank would theoretically be the fastest, but because super missile refills are so rare, there is uh, a high degree of variance in going with that route. And uh, Dragon Dark and Kirby Master both agree that taking the, the second missile tank is just the uh, simplest way to do it. Uh, okay, whew. Now, taking the screw attack does have merits as well, notably for two specific fights, uh, Mother Brain and Mecha Ridley, where it can help you de dodge the uh, Rinkas and turret fire against Mother Brain, and it can help you deal with the missile attack that Ridley has. Instead of having to shoot them with your plasma beam, you can just screw attack into them, and it's safer. And it's a safer alternative than having to shoot them while also dodging lasers and the uh, claw attack. Uh, okay, so where was I going with this? So yeah, those are that's the minimum 10% you need in hard mode. But, the uh, ending is achievable by having no more than 15%, which means you have a little bit of wiggle room in regards to giving yourself some extra padding. So you have another 6 items you can take in uh, normal mode, and depending on what you take in hard mode, you either have an extra 5 or 6%. You technically do have... You, t you technically... Since you have a choice of what your 10th item is, you technically do still get 6% in the hard variant of this run. So in normal mode, it's it's pretty simple. You just dump it all into uh, E-Tanks and Super Missiles, whatever you're comfortable with. I usually go with two E-Tanks and uh, three Super Missile packs in normal mode. Six Super Missiles is enough for anything. And then the last one, I just give myself an extra Missile Pack so that I can take better advantage of refills. In hard mode, you have to consider uh, a couple of things. One is the escape timer in Torian. Because it's only one minute long in hard mode, you, uh... There... Sorry. It's hard to think while I'm doing this. Okay, got it. Because the escape timer shows, is so short in hard mode, you have to uh, weigh your options a bit more. It is possible to do it if you're if you're seasoned enough. It is possible to handle the escape with like with still a little bit of time to spare without any of the essential upgrades. But unless you're a master at bomb jumping and wall jumping, it is strongly advised that you take either the speed booster or the high jump to assist you. And if forced to a decision between the two, I would always take the high jump in that situation because the high jump has applications outside of the few areas that you would use the speed booster to help you escape faster. Uh, one, one is actually in the fight with Mother Brain herself. Uh, typically with, with just the base jump, the jump height, it's actually kind of a tricky affair to dodge the uh, beam attack that she has. Because you'll have to hop between the two tiny platforms while while evading uh, Rinka and turret fire. But if you have the high jump, you can just jump to the turret above the first platform and and clear the uh, the brain attack easily or the beam attack rather easily. The only thing you have to watch out for is when the turret is going to fire in a certain direction. And you, but I sort of do this anyway to coincide my the times that I fire at Mother Brain to. Uh, sync up with when the turret, what direction the turret is facing at any given time so that I can evade it easier. And I will talk about that when I actually get to Turian. So, high jump is has applications outside of just escaping uh, the uh, Turian escape that make it helpful throughout the game. Especially when you get space jump, because space jump by itself is actually pretty crappy. High jump makes it a lot more bearable. And also, uh, while you don't need it in normal mode, the screw attack has definite merit in hard mode. Uh, because the space pirates are so dangerous in the second half of the game, the screw attack gives you another means of dealing with them. Where you don't have to, like, be 
aim, shooting and aiming in advance and risking injury anyway. Screw attack gives you some extra security against them, and it's also helpful in the fight against Mother Brains, as you can safely jump between the two platforms, uh, and your screw attack will destroy both the Rinkas and the turret fire, and they won't hamper you from uh, jumping back and forth between the two platforms. The fight becomes simplifies uh, quite a bit with screw attack, but you don't need it. So whether you want to take it on uh, hard mode is your choice. You definitely don't need it on normal mode. So, assuming you take those two items in hard mode, that leaves you with an extra 4% to grab. Now, I only run 1-2 to two energy tanks in normal mode, but for hard mode, I recommend exactly 3 E-tanks. No more and no less. The reason for this is that the uh, space pirates in... Crap. In, uh, in Chozodia, while you don't have your suit, they deal a total of 200 damage. So, if you have at least three E-Tanks for that part, you can survive a single hit. That gives you some breathing room while you're uh, trying to evade them and get back to your suit. And once you get your suit back, that extra, uh, those three E-Tanks will allow you to survive two hits because they'll deal 100 damage at that point. And being able to survive two hits through, uh, as you make your way to the cockpit and in the uh, mothership escape gives you a lot of extra room for error. So having three E-Tanks is, is extremely valuable in the second half of the game. And it gives you plenty of energy to work with in the first half. So depending on what you take uh, afterwards, whether or not you incorporate the high jump or the uh, screw attack, that also allows you to take between one to three extra expansions for ammo. Now if you have just one item to work with, you should take the super missile because uh, it's more firepower than the missile. Well, if you're ta if you're doing a speed run, you should probably take the second missile tank. But if you're just trying to beat the 15% uh, challenge casually, you're better off with the super missile. Besides the extra burst damage, it also uh, simplifies Turian considerably. One super missile can destroy a Metroid, so you always have a um, ace in the hole if things get hairy. You can use that one super to cut down the threat if more than one show up. And also, since the Zebatites take exactly seven missiles, two missiles plus one super is enough to crack those as well. So you just break one, refill, break one, refill, rinse and repeat until they're all dead. With four missiles instead, you have to get refills on the screen and then time it properly, and it's a huge pain. Now, assuming you don't take the screw attack of the high jump and you're confident enough in your abilities to make do without those items, you can take extra expansions to... Uh, help out with the uh, ammo shortages. In this regard, I take one extra missile tank and I take two super tanks. So having four missiles and two supers means less refills get wasted on both fronts. Since uh, supers give two per refill, if you're empty and you happen to find one, you're going to get your full payload back, which hell, comes in handy a lot. And having four missiles instead of two means you can pick up two of those and uh, less of them get wasted because of overfill. Having all that extra ammo really helps for boss fights as well. So, that's the route I'm going to be going with for my uh, hard 15% run. The 9 essential items, 3 E-tanks, one, one extra missile tank, and 2 super missile tanks, giving me 4 and 2, with 249 energy. Crap, I don't want to die again. Oh my god, this is not good. Okay, I really need to just shut up and think now. Okay, next is the ice beam. And then after that, I'm going to take the uh, alternate route into Ridley and do that first so I have supers for Kraid. So, because I'm not having speed booster, to actually get the super missiles, I have to fight the, um, I forget what that boss is called, the, the giant hornet thing, whatever it is. You have to fight this boss to get supers without the speed booster, so that's why I took my, my second missile tank early, so that I have the ammo necessary to fight this boss. It also helps for the um, cocoon boss as well. Derp, because I don't know these names. Then again, people call Mecha Ridley Iron Ted, so, you know, they call the Chozo Guardian Charlie. So, why don't I just come up with my own names for this shit? That would be a much better idea. Okay, that was good. 
All right, now we're off to Lower North there. So normally you would come here uh, after Kraid because you would have the speed booster to get down there, but there's an alternate route that takes you straight down to the bottom. And then to get back up, you would use the uh, turbo the uh, turbo tunnels to uh, shoot straight up instead. This is also what lets you uh, bypass screw attack if you don't want to take it later. But you could get screw attack. I could get screw attack right now if I wanted it. As I've already decided on my route, though, I am going to skip it. Okay. Glad I hit it. Okay, there it is. So by going this way, you can get to Ridley early, and you can and this bypass is needing the speed booster at all. Um, I don't think I need refills from this room, but I'm gonna fill up anyway. Oh, that's good enough. So, something I've seen a lot of 15% uh, players do is they go ahead and pick up the long beam in there as part of their 6% uh, allotment. And this honestly kind of baffles me because, yeah, I can understand the convenience of having the longer beam range, but since you can't really use your uh, long beam to fight mo much of the any of the bosses, with the exception of one, uh, because you're still gonna because you need because without missiles the only way to damage a boss is gonna be through charge attacks and you don't pick that up. Uh, I really don't think the uh, long beam is a wise choice to take. It only helps you against one boss, the uh, uh, sandworm, because that's the only boss in the in the game that can be injured without needing uh, missiles or the charge beam. But. Um, what was I going to say? You, ju you just don't need it. You don't need the long beam. The, uh, picking up the ice beam when you don't have the long beam actually increases its range a little bit. It's not much of an increase, but it's noticeable and it's enough to work with. The, go the uh, ice beam turns your short beam from being a piece of crap to being something that's serviceable. Ah, my mic is messed up again. Come on. Really? Okay, there we go. Good, at least I got a couple missiles to start this fight with. Alright, so I have two E-tanks right now. I'm gonna grab the last one at Ridley. And there he is. Alright, back up to go and fight the Hornet. Now the Hornet is kind of a long fight because you have to uh, depend on refills from its stingers. So you have to wait until it makes a, swoop, a swooping pass and you have to position yourself to actually shoot out the, the uh, barbs that it fires. So the fight usually takes a couple of minutes. And it goes slowly in the second phase but it speeds up in the last phase because uh, he fires a lot more barbs in quick succession, and he, and he moves faster, too. So go to this hill, the, the, just one step up, and you, get, uh, you can safely fire the stingers from there, and then run all the way back and position yourself behind them. This works relatively well until phase two, where you'll only be able to hit one stinger instead of two, and the fight will slow down a bit at that point. Once you get to that point, it's recommended that you roll up the hill instead to avoid uh, retaliation. If you conserve your energy throughout the first part of the fight, when you get to phase three, you can do it. You can uh, just tank your way up the hill and finish it off faster. Because dodging the uh, stingers when uh, the uh, corner is coming from the opposite direction is much trickier in the last phase. It fires so many. All right, phase two. Now I'm only going to get one refill instead of two.
But as long as I have full health, it's gonna guarantee it's pretty much guaranteed to be a missile refill. Still in phase two, huh? Yeah, notice the increase in range for, for just by picking up the ice beam. It's uh, about one full tile, so it's not that much, but it's definitely noticeable, and it's definitely makes the beam something you can actually work with. When you get the plasma beam later in the game, the range actually increases a bit more to about it's five tiles right now. It's about six tiles with the plasma beam. It becomes almost. Uh, like almost it's like it's like almost uh unnoticeable that you would even need the long beam at that point all right should only take one or two more swoops i'm gonna wait i want to get a full refill before i go up there Alright, I can just eat this one and then finish him. There we go. Give me them supers. Alright. Off to Ridley now. I'll pick up one extra super pack along the way, and then I'll get the uh, E-Tang right before fighting Ridley. And that'll be it for all my expansions. So, normally you're supposed to take that green door to get to Ridley, but that uh, leads to an unskippable missile tank, so um, if you d if you want to avoid, unless you actually like want to pick that one up as part of your 15% allotment, you want to take the alternate route into, uh, into Ridley's lair, which actually puts you right at his front door, pretty much. Alright, so you fire a missile up here, and then bomb jump. And there you are. Those guys do about uh, 64 damage with the various suit on hard, so do your best to avoid them. And that gravity block's not there for some reason. All right, I just I just need to get through this room alive. I don't have to worry about taking damage. Ow. Or so I thought. Ow, they hurt! And that wasn't a very, very good idea. Okay, I'm fine. Here's the second super missile tank. There's one more I could get in the room across from me, but I'm not taking more than this. So right now, that puts me at about... Uh, 7, 8, 12%. So there's still the two unknown items and one E-Tank to grab. And then that's it for the 15%. It's going to be all down to player skill at that point. Go ahead and use my super on this door because there's a refill right afterwards. Alright, so Ridley has a thousand hit points, takes 50 missiles to kill. I can unload two supers right off the bat and get a good chunk of damage on him and he won't retaliate. But at, from that point on, when he's uh, hovering up in the air, going back and forth, if you damage him too quickly, he'll uh, retaliate with a bunch of tail swipes and they do a hundred damage each. You're pretty much dead if he does that, so you kind of have to spread your damage out for this fight. You have to wait for refills from the fireballs anyway. And I forgot to unload right right off the bat. Okay, that's fine. I got it anyway. So, uh... 36 to go. 
So if you stay right under his feet like this, you can uh, move forward with him, evade the tail, and you won't end up getting grabbed by the hands. And you could just pretty much do this the whole fight, waiting for uh, refills from the fireballs. Which sometimes he can be a uh, Scrooge and not give you. He's doing right now. Come on. Really, dude? Okay, there they are. Now, if you're really lucky, you could get a super refill from these. It's rare, but it does happen. So, every time he comes down once, that's when I take the opportunity to fire a missile. That's not gonna hit his, uh, revenge threshold. I forget what I'm at right now. I think he's at, he has about 30 to go. As long as you're, as you're consistent with your positioning and you don't go too far or wait too long, this fight's really not... Oh, there's a super right there. Okay, I have to be careful if I'm going to use this, though. I'm going to wait until the fight's almost over. This could set off his revenge value if I hit him with two right off the bat. I don't know why I was hanging on to that one. The tail actually does 80 damage with the very soon. It's 100 if you don't have it. So, if you're doing hard 10%, this guy is a one-hit kill, pretty much. Oh, full health. Alright. He's giving me bad luck with the fireballs. Alright, we're in the last phase now. I think with one more refill, I'll have enough to take him down. Oh, shoot. Ah, ah I could have used that. I'm going to wait for one more. I wish that was a little higher. I would have I would have burned him right there. Come on. Ow. Really, dude? I just want one more pack of missiles. Thank you. Goodbye. That wasn't as smooth as I was hoping for, but whatever. Ridley's done, and now we're off to trade. Oh, thanks for the super bomb, I guess. So the only item left to pick up is Artifact 2 near Kraid. So there's a speed booster tunnel down there, but you can just shoot this and go this way instead. Ow. I'm gonna have to eat a bit of pain here because I don't have missiles. Okay. That could have been worse. It may seem like a lot, but even uh, at this stage of the game, 249 energy is not that much. You still have to be careful. These three I should just be able to run through though. Yeah. Ow. Alright, I better get my health back while I'm here. Good enough. All right, and we're out of here. <clears throat> this will be the quick way out of Norfair. So if you don't have speed booster, this is the way you get out instead. 
And there's another one in the room above the high jump. I do got to be a little bit careful here to make sure I don't... Okay, that's fine. I have grabbed that one by accident before. Spoiler run because of it. Uh, let me go ahead and get my reading missiles back. Now, if you picked up Screw Attack on your way through here, this is actually a room you have to be careful in, because these blocks are all destroyable. With, well, it doesn't show it, but these blocks can all be destroyed with Screw Attack, so you kind of have to jump carefully through this room if you have it. Try to spin jump, try not to spin jump too much, and if you do end up doing it, try to, to level out before you land. Alright, that's it for Norfair. Acid safe to go in with various suit. High charge beam, by charge beam. Oh, those things don't hurt you either once you have the uh, various suit. It's not like they were ever really a threat to begin with, but it's a neat little detail. So with the ice beam in tow, you actually have enough uh, range to get through that barricade. At least from that side. I don't know if you can from the, the front, but you can from the back. Alright, and Kraid's down here. So the sandworm, I believe, takes about 30 missiles to kill. I have 14 missiles worth, and I'm planning on saving the supers for the last phase of the fight because it's harder to uh, get opportunities to attack him at that point. He doesn't stay vulnerable as long. And this is the one fight in the game where you can actually injure this boss with uncharged beam shots, but because I don't have the long beam, the range is not going to be high enough to shoot him from one side. So you're pretty much dependent on missiles for this fight too. That's fine though, that's why I have them. Ah, come on. So having the various suit for this fight, you're actually not really supposed to have it, but um, by having it for this fight, the acid actually becomes safe to uh, traverse, and you don't have to worry about it as a hazard, even when he uses it as a, uh, an attack to flood the room. Having various suit for this fight actually simplifies it quite a bit. Now there's an E-Tank here that if you haven't allotted as part of your 15%, you have to avoid, and you do it just by uh, morphing into the tunnel instead. I've accidentally grabbed that one before when I didn't mean to, and... Uh, Thankfully, that on that run, I was early with the item collection, so it just meant that I had to uh, take a uh, one less missile, one less uh, ammo expansion. And here we go. It still ended up working out, but four E tanks really is. I didn't mean to do that. Shit. It's still too much. I don't recommend less than three on hard mode, but I don't recommend more than three either. 249 energy is the perfect threshold for what you would need it for. So once you've emptied your missiles into him, go to the far side of the room and bait him to, sh to, uh, sp to uh, spit some debris at you so you can get refills. And since I see, since I have various suit, I'm pretty much safe from the acid. I'm not safe from poor timing of uh, that though. That's just pure ineptitude. 
there's the flooding attack. Because I have various suit, I can just stand there and take it too. Oh good, all refills. Uh, at this point I might be able to empty that super. Nice health drops. Nice health drops, asshole. Oh. Really? Ah, uh, almost enough. Alright, one more salvo should do it. Oh, I thought so. I only had time to fire off two there. There it is. Alright, now it's off to Kraid. Careful not to grab that one. Ow. Buggers. So if you want to know just how powerful missiles are in this game, um, by default your beam damage is 2. And it goes up by 1 for every beam you collect that isn't the charge beam. So... If you have the uh, long plus ice beam, your beam damage is 4. And charge beam multiplies that damage by 4. So with long ice and charge, a charge shot would be a total of 16 damage. One missile does 20 damage. So even with uh, long and ice and a, a charged long and ice beam, your missile still strips, outstrips it in damage. And a super missile does 100 damage. So even with the maximum beam, beam combo, you, your uh, beams cannot hope to touch your ballistics pretty much. The strongest combo you can have in the first half of the game is uh, Long Ice Wave, which gives you a beam damage of 5 and a charge damage of 20. So congratulations, all those beam con all those beams you have stacked, your charge attack, uh, charge shot e rivals the damage of one single missile. I don't understand. I don't know how it went from being so great in fusion to being so awful in uh, zero mission. With the exception of, you know, being able to pseudo screw attack with it. The damage the damage is just not there when you compare it to your mis your uh, missile arsenal. Alright, so Kraid has uh Down please. Okay, good. Kraid has 300 hit points, so I can, uh, I can do a huge chunk of that right off the bat if I don't miss. And I did, of course. Alright, so that's 160 so far. Seven more missiles to go. But now I need more refills because I, uh, I suck at shooting. Oh, really? I'm awful. I, I really would like you to destroy that platform, please, so that I can get refills easier. Screw it. Okay, there we go. Okay, I think he's got about uh, 100 hit points left. Okay, so he should be destroying this at this point. Nice health drops. Nice health drops! Okay, he did destroy it now. This is bad.
Alright, it's almost dead. That should be enough if I can grab that. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna wait. I'm low health now. I'm doing this fight pretty awful. Oh my god! Oh my god, dude! Am I seriously gonna lose the run here? Okay, come on. Oh my god, okay. Jeez! Oh, I don't want to cut it that close again. That was awful. All because I missed that super. Go me. And I can't use this uh, thing to refill because speed booster's in the way. Oh, what am I? Sorry. That that sound is my phone. If you can hear that. Get out of here. Okay, well that was hairy, but... I guess it's better than dying. So with uh, only four miss, basically only six missiles to work with, and four because I never got a super refill, uh, the escape from crate is actually a little bit tricky. There is a way to deal with the uh, Moth Swarm without missiles, but it's kind of RNG dependent and it's not always going to work, but we'll see. Okay, it worked. We're good. Now off to Torian, or as Dragon Dark would say, where shit gets real. Metroid, Metroids are not going to do you die damage like they do to him in his low percent runs, but they're still a threat. So I'm hoping the game will be at least um, relatively generous with super drops. If from them, if not from the Rinkos. The Rinkos can drop supers too, but they're extremely rare. Sometimes you might kill 11 or 12 and not even get one missile refill. I'm going to take this now. No, you know what? I'll take the one at the top, because it's on the way anyway. So, Metroids take uh, a total of five missiles to kill after they're frozen. They only stay frozen for two seconds. Five missiles or one super missile. So when you're doing a hard, a hard 15% or hard low percent where you have a super missile, Basically, you're just going to be using your regular missiles for single Metroids and waiting for refills, and you will save your super missiles for uh, when more than one show, out, show up so you can cut down the threat quickly. Since I have two, I can be a little bit more lenient with it. I can, uh, I can spare one against uh, single targets to uh, speed things up a bit, especially if I don't have any missiles for, for when I get an encounter, which can happen. Sometimes the Rinkas are really stingy with the refills. But I always try to save at least one super in case two or three Metroids show up so that I can cut down the threat quicker. Two is manageable, three is, uh, gets dangerous. And there they are. And by the way, the hitboxes on these things are really wonky. That green crap around them is not the hitbox. The hitbox is that red thing inside of them. I've had many situations where I would be standing straight up or I'd be crouching to get to line up a shot and it, it would either go right over them or right under them. It's really infuriating sometimes, especially when you waste a super. So there's six rooms with Metroids totaling uh, 23 on normal mode and 35 on hard. One of these rooms has eight of them crammed in, into every last corner of it. I'm gonna try not to waste the super right now. Yes, give me that. Alright, one down, 34 to go.
So I like to keep to hang on to one missile when I have four. The reason for this is because when you uh, empty your entire payload of missiles, if you have supers, it'll automatically switch to them. Ah, oh, crap. I didn't mean to... I wanted to grab that for this guy. Crap. Okay. Okay. We're good. We're good. We're fine. So, by, so I, this is just... That's just my excuse for being lazy, because I don't want to have to swap back. Nice health drops. Okay, there's one. Damn it, that's supers. Alright, this will be a little bit uh, sweaty. Ah, I'm gonna have to wait. That's one. Oh, good, 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 good. All right, next one. He's just at the right height. Normally, I'd actually be missing that shot. All right, so there's two over here, and I don't. I still don't have supers. I'm not. I'm not getting very lucky with the drops. All right, the top one. Nice. Nice, nice. Good missile refills when I need them. I'm really hoping for supers for one of these two, because the next room is really brutal. Oh, I only pulled one. Okay, thanks. that's good. See what I mean, though? Sometimes the Rinkas can be really stingy. Come on! Thank you. Uh, okay. Ah! He ate a missile. Stupid. Ah, uh, uh, it's... Uh, come on. Ah! Really? That was weird. Okay, I need four missiles for this room. Wish they would have given me supers, but I'll just have to make do. This room has eight Metroids in it, and three of them can get at me right away. This one's blocking the other one, though. That's good. Only two of them came up. I was worried the third one might find me. Okay, there we go. I was... Uh, yeah, I didn't want to grab that, but that's fine. Oh, there's the third one. Uh, I really need a refill here. Ah! Come on! Okay, there we go. Oh! Ah, uh, that... Scary. Okay, good, super. All right, I'm gonna need no. Yes, yes, I do need one here. Oh, good. I can use the last two on these. Get a refill in the next room. Okay. Thank you for those supers when I needed them. So green rinkas are guaranteed to always drop something. There's my super. Alright, we're moving on. So you can use them for an easy farm. Oh, good. Refill. Alright. Need to use one super here. Nice. This is going smooth. This is going very smooth. 
Nice, dude. Look at this. Okay, I still have one super for this first part. Last Metroid room. Nice. I can't ask for much better than this. Alright, three Metroids left. Ah, crap. Can I get those? Man, that was great. Okay, that's it for the Metroids. It's the Zebatites and Mother Brain now. And then the escape. Alright, so I need to get my supers refilled in here. Zebatites take exactly seven missiles. So with four missiles and two supers, I have the equivalent of 14, so I can break two at a time. So you fire two missiles and then quickly switch to a super and fire that one breaks. And then the other two and one for the second Zebatite. Then once all four are broken, I come back here, out here and refill one more time for Mother Brain. Just like that. The game gives you a bunch of green ones here specifically for this purpose. Though sometimes they can be stingy with the supers just because it's a rare draw. Uh, they are. Come on. Wow. Sure game. This is what I was talking about with the uh, the uh, RNG part of 10% uh, hard mode speedruns. If you take the super, you're dependent on uh, getting super refills, and sometimes the game just won't give them to you. All right, that's it for the Zebatites. Refill one more time, and then it's and then the showdown with Mother Brain. Well, that was quick. All right, so I'm not going to use my supers to break the glass case. I'm going to save those for when the case is open. Mother Brain retaliates after three missiles on hard mode, but you can uh, kind of take advantage of this by firing two missiles and then firing a super right after. This resets it to the normal three, but you get seven missiles worth of damage instead. So what I'm going to do, this Rinka down here is way more dangerous than the one up top. So I'm only going to use the one up top for refills, and I'm going to keep the bottom one frozen as long as I can and take it out of the equation. As long as I'm on this platform, I'm safe from turret fire. I just have to keep this Rinka out of the way while I get refills from the top one. Now once the case is open, I need a safe spot to uh, evade the, the, uh, the beam attack. The safe spot is that turret platform right above, the first, right above that Rinka. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze the Rinka when I'm ready to attack Mother Brain, set off the retaliation, and then jump up to the Rinka and then to the turret to evade the beam attack. And what I have to pay attention for is what direction the turret is facing when I do this. I need it to be ready to face straight downward so I'd have no risk of being shot at when I jump up there. Alright, so I got enough. Here we go. No, I'm going to wait. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, like that. As long as I time it correctly, I can get up there safely. I just have to pay attention to what direction that turret is facing. I need to wait for this guy. Ah, crap. Did not mean to do that. Okay, we're good. Alright, that's 14 missiles worth of damage. Mother Brain, ha it takes 20 to blow the case open, and Mother Brain herself has 35, uh, has 700 hit points, so 35 missiles is what it takes. Let's 
17. Twenty. Ow. Twenty-three. Oh, jeez. Um. Okay, I have to grab that. Uh, okay. Whew. That was a very lucky refill. I need to wait. 30. I think the super will finish him at this point. There it is. All right. Now the escape. One minute. Hope you're good at wall jumping. Watch as I just drop inputs left and right here. So without high jump, you can't really scale these platforms well. You have to cling to them. Okay. That went good. Okay, I cannot ask for a better shaft than that. I have plenty of time to do this. Nice. Oh, I didn't mean to aim downward. Crap. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. So without high jump and without speed booster, the only way through up, up through this tunnel is uh, the, to uh, bomb jump. High jump, you can just kick off that wall to the left, like that. Ten seconds to spare. Excellent. Bye, Turian. Bye, Mother Brain. Well, that's not fair. Oh, now that's bullshit. Alright, so uh, I'm going to make a save here and I'm going to uh, pick this up in another, in another segment. Well, I have to get inside for that first, but crap. There's no way I'm going to do this without death, so. Anyway, because I have those uh, three E-tanks, I will be able to survive a hit from the pirates later. Two, once I get my suit back. But I'll cover that in the next segment. The unofficial mark of shame of the Zero Mission community. Getting that map. All right, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna stop here, and I'll pick it up in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.